guys, today is another ballet centre basics video and today we're going to be looking at pique turns, underdone -done, and soutenu turns. So these are the two most common turns probably to do from the corner on the diagonal. So let's start with pique turns, underdone. So as with all types of pirouettes and turns in ballet, they derive from a balance. So the first thing is to be able to balance in the position that we're going to need to turn in. So in the case of Piki and the Nan, it's a little dip, but we leave the little dip behind the knee instead of bringing it to the front. Okay, so that is the position, this position, and with the arms nicely held, supporting through the back and the shoulders, and pulling up from the hips. All of the arms have to be really, really engaged so that we can maintain this position through the turn and keep it controlled and obviously it's going to be unrelevant. So what I would suggest is actually just practicing your balances in this position because it's going to help you be able to control the pinky on your diamond much better and it's going to give you the control to do them slower, to do them quicker, to do them with the dynamics that your teacher wants for that particular exercise. So it's really important to have really good control of the balance position. So, once you have the balance position clear, how do we get into that position in order to do the turn? So, usually we're going to start crossing and we're going to plie, do a quarter of a rond de jambe. And this is really important that your foot is touching the floor because it's easy sometimes that this foot comes off when we see this to get into it. No, the foot should do a normal rond de jambe, that means that the big toe is on the floor. Then from here, there are two ways that I've been taught that you can learn uh, piquets under them. One of them is doing the preparation here, here. The other way is doing the preparation here. Again, it depends on the school. So check with your teacher which way they prefer for you to practice. But for today, because we're going to do the turn, we're going to think about this from the jump coming to here, and then I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to obviously continue the turn. So, the idea is that I come here, I do the turn, I release that foot again, and this is the hard thing. The hard thing is controlling uh, coming down from the underdone. Actually, with all pre-reds, I think the hardest thing is controlling the landing. It's quite easy to get up and make this look really nice, but then if, if we end like this, it's kind of ruined all the beauty of the beginning of the turn. So it's really important to keep your weight forward and to control the landing. Obviously, sometimes you're closing fifth if you're just doing one, but usually you're going to be releasing that front foot to do the next one again. So ideally, we should be coming here, release that front foot, to go again, release the front foot. That's the idea of the feet. Now the arms, again, it will depend on your school. Some people, and I guess the more traditional, pure classical technique is going to be from third, over to second, and then close to first to do the turn. So there are two different ways of doing the arms. We're in third. As I do the rond de jambe, I open out to second, and I'm still in second until I close to turn. So basically one is just showing the second position for a fraction longer, and the other one is showing it for less time. So option one is here, here. Option two is here, here, and then close. So again, it depends on the school. For me, the one that makes more sense and it feels like it helps me more is to close that first position a bit quicker. So hopefully it should look something like this. And obviously it's exactly the same to the other side. So now for super new turns, the way that we start is similar to the big angle. So we're doing again a quarter of a round of jump. Um, and this leg is going to bend. And from here, we're going to step up into fifth position. Okay? It's really important to show the fifth position. This is the difference between a messy turn and a neat turn. A messy turn is going to look like this. I'm already turning. 
a knee turn is going to look like this. You see the fifth and then I turn. So it's really important to show that fifth position if there's time for music. Sometimes the music is so fast and you just have to get around. But the idea is that I should show this fifth position before I turn and then again. Coming down on my centre, releasing that leg to run the jump again, to show again that fifth position and turn. Obviously with the Sutanu, I'm bringing this back foot in front, but I'm finishing with the other foot in front. So there has to be a little bit, if I just leave these feet exactly where they are, I'm going to finish like this. So I do need to just let my feet move slightly as I'm turning. Don't leave them, both feet drilled into the floor where they are. There has to be a little bit of movement so that I finish in a nice good position with the other leg in front. So, Sutanu, Sutanu. So again, to the other side. Show the fifth, show the fifth, show the fifth, show the fifth, and fifth, and so on. Again, it depends on the school when you're going to show the fifth really still on this diagonal or whether you're going to show the fifth more on fast and then turn on fast and turn. So again, check with your teacher exactly where they want to see that fifth position before the turn. Something else that's important for both the Piki and the and for the Susanu is that that leg is straight before we go up, while we go up, during the turn. <laughs> And basically the whole time, because what we don't want, what we don't want is for this to go like that and then to get up and bend it to come up. No. And it's even more important on point that that leg is dead straight and it stays straight, dead straight. Okay? The same with the Susanu. It's easy with the Susanu for some reason, but I've seen less people bending that leg. Um, but the same here. It's straight, both legs are straight, and that as straight as you can get them. This leg is going to be what gives us power. So we're not trying to get power by keeping it closer to us to step out. No, we're going to get power by pushing up the supporting leg and going far and keeping that leg as straight as possible. So again, we don't want to like undercut. I don't want to be coming here close to me. I want to be going far, travel it, travel the turn. And exactly the same with the Sutanu. Don't make it really small underneath you. Where that leg's going, you need to go to that leg. Don't bring the leg to you. You go to the leg. So wherever you're on the jump in, go to that leg. And go. Obviously, the last thing and the thing that's really going to help us, and especially if we're doing double under arms, is the head. So pick a spot on your diagonal and focus there. So each time I'm looking, there's my spot, change my head, spot, spot, spot. And exactly the same thing when we see the news, spot, 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 spot. So I really hope this video was helpful guys. As always, if you have any other questions or video requests, you can leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.